depending on the community, depending on the community and empowering the needy is what our Sunday school lesson will be on this Sunday. And I want to talk about the community for a moment and how it is so important and how most people don't want to hear stuff like this because, you know, the communities are so messed up. But I want to talk about Ruth and Naomi for a moment with Boaz and use this as a great example how we're supposed to help each other because the Bible teaches us that the poor will always be amongst us. Now, Ruth, I have already did a story about Ruth and Boaz, the whole thing from chapter one to chapter four, I believe. But for those who don't know, and I hope it's a lot of women looking at this, Ruth. Ruth was a loyal and unselfish woman who loved her mother-in-law, Naomi. She really did. When Ruth lost her husband, she promised Naomi that she would live with her as long as she needed to, as long as she lived, pretty much. And Ruth and Naomi wound up going to Israel, where Ruth met Boaz, is which one I'm going to bring you up to in this lesson. Because remember, remember uh, Naomi. Now, Naomi and her family moved to Moab to escape the famine in Israel, and we all remember about the famine in Israel. If you've been keeping up with me, I started off talking about Moses when he led the children of Israel, and then how they became disobedient. Even Moses became disobedient at some times, and then Moses died, and he didn't make it in the promised land because of his disobedience, and then Joshua took over, then Joshua died, and we talked about Gideon, we talked about the judges, so on and so on. So I'm just kind of bringing you to where I am now. And Ruth also was a Moabite. She was a Moabite widow because she, like I said, she lost her husband. So I want to uh, move to chapter two since we already have done the videos about the rest of it. Now, one thing we noticed too, see Ruth and them was in the time of the judges. Now, if you know, if you've been keeping up with me, then you know what I was talking about, the judges, and who the judges are. And it shows us through Ruth that it don't matter what your color is, if you're black, Hispanic, it don't matter what your race is. If you put your trust in God and live for God, God will take care of you and supply your every need. That's why we need to stop all this racism and all this stuff. Just don't even make no sense. Now, let's move on to Ruth chapter 2, verses 8 through 18. And it says, Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Here is thou not my daughter. Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide her fast from maiden, from maidens. Now, Boaz means strength. And Boaz is simply telling Ruth now because he sees this young, beautiful woman. And he tells her, don't worry about going nowhere else. Don't go to another field. Because Boaz was pretty much rich and he had servants working up under him. And Boaz also was a man of God who loved God. And he sees Ruth and tells her, don't worry about going into another field. Whatever you need, just just stay here and we're going to take care of you in so many words. And verse 9 says, Let thine eyes be on the field that they do not reap. I mean, that they do reap, excuse me, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art at thirst, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. In other words, now anytime you somewhere where you don't know nobody, you a foreigner, you're in a strange place. So Boaz is telling her, what, if you need much water as you need, get all you need. Them men out there, they're not going to lay their hands on you because I already told them, don't touch you, don't do nothing. Don't even pretty much look Ruth way in so many words because Boaz is showing that he curls for her. In verse 10 it says, then she fell on her face and bowed, or bowed herself unto the ground and said unto him, now she's telling Boaz, Ruth says to Boaz, why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou should, shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Now Ruth falls to the ground and said, let me just paraphrase it. Why are you being so good to me, man? You don't even know me. You showing me all this grace and you treating me like this. I mean, why are you doing this to me? In verse 11 says, and Boaz answered and said unto her, it had fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in thy land of thy nat nativity, and art come unto a people which thou not knowest thou her afore. In other words, I know about your good works, Ruth. This is what Boaz is telling her. 
I know that you have been so good, how you treating the mother-in-law, you still taking care of her. You have left everybody to come here where you don't know nobody. I know how good you are. You don't have to hurt for nothing here. Verse 12 says, the Lord recomposed our work and a full reward be given unto thee of the Lord God of Israel under those, excuse me, under whose wings thou art to come trust. And then in verse 13, it says, then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast come for me and for thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaid, thou art be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. Now we see that Boaz pretty much sticks to his law and he shows that he curves for Ruth. And we can tell that he likes Ruth because when you look at on in the next chapters, you're going to find out what Boaz do to get Ruth. I'm not going to get into that in this video because I already did it before, but we see that he curls for her. This is the community, people. Now, let's pause right there for just a moment and think about nowadays how we supposed to be as a community. Now, I'm going to say this bluntly. Everybody in the community ain't smoking crack. Everybody ain't no dope. Everybody ain't a drunk. Everybody ain't selling dope. It's some people in the community who has had good jobs and have been laid off and they need help. And you got all these churches in the community just sitting still. You got people that walk past the drunk man. They drive past the prostitutes. They don't even speak and say hello. They don't even ask them if they need a cup of water. But we see in this lesson how the community is so important. What if our communities could come together like this? In this time of the recession, everybody like to call. How many people stay right next door to their neighbor? They don't even know who their own neighbor is. They don't even know if they need anything because we don't even check on each other. I just had to point that out for a minute. And uh, where did we stop? We're on verse 14. It says, And Boaz said unto her, A meal time, come thou hither and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and she reached her part of corn, and she did eat, and she was selfish and left. In other words, Boaz told her to eat much as you can. She gets to sit down and eat at the table with them. Now, remind you, they don't even really know her. Then the Bible also teaches us when you have a little gathering, you invite in people that is not your family. You have a gathering, invite in people that like the poor, people that sick, people that need the needy. Invite in the needy, but we don't never see that nowadays, hardly. Rarely do you see that. Verse 15 says, and when she was rising up to glean, Boaz commanded his young man, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not. 16 says, And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them, that she may glean them and rebu rebuke her not. 17 says, So she gleaned in the field of her even, and beat out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley, which means grain. And finally, verse 18 says that she took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, and she brought forth and gave to her she had reserved after she was suffered. Suffered, I mean, excuse me. In other words, she, she curls for Naomi. She goes out and get all the grain she can, which we would call food. She still curls for her mother-in-law. Really, how many women? will still take care of their mother-in-law if their husband died. Our husbands, how many of us would keep on hanging on to the mother-in-law and, and, and doing this and doing that for them? Ruth is a virtuous woman. And I learned so much from this. It's not just a love story. See, the love story pops on in the next chapter pretty much to me, but it still shows me right here how Boaz loved her off top because of her works. This man had everything he needed. And she is a foreigner coming into his field. And she is saying, why are you being so good to me? I know of your works. How many of us men can say, I know of that woman's work? How many of us just go out and get anybody instead of praying about it and letting God lead us into the right one? How many people keep going out the body, the body, the flesh, and not worrying about what's in the mind and the heart? Woo, you lay down with dog, you'll get fleas. So we see in this whole lesson, I'm just trying to make sure I cover what I wanted to cover, that Ruth and Naomi was face-to-face -face with the, you know, living with no economic support. 
And we need to understand we are living like that right now in these days' time. You look at the government. You know what's so sad down here? You pay you, everybody that pay their taxes, man. You pay your taxes and they, and they don't do you no kind of justice. I t I'll give an example like the trash can. They used to would take up trash twice a week. Now you know you got a lot of trash in a week's time. Now they take it up once a week. And they charge you more. Reason I'm saying is this economy, these things that's going on, like the Bible teaches us, these beginning of sorrows people, they're gonna get worse and worse. And why are you still saying this, JT? Because us as a community, I don't know who you are and where you stay at, but a community need to pull together. Paul showed us this also. That's why I say everybody is not on the streets. What about the woman that lost her husband with her kids? This is why I get so mad when these churches sit up here and beg for all this money. They beg and beg and you ain't doing nothing in the community. Now, I know people do what they do. But Jesus showed us that you look past what people do and you help them anyway. So what? You don't support their habit by giving them money. But get them something to eat. Get them some clothes to wear. Pray for them instead of talking about them. That's what I try to do in this community right here. I care about people. Yes, they're going to make you frustrated. But look at how God had to deal with all of us. A community is so important. I keep telling folks, next beside our father, all we have is each other. And we don't even have each other nowadays. You got more churches at each other's neck, more preachers versus preachers. We got a million churches around her. And nobody seems like they're trying to reach out to the community half of the time. They too busy being caught on themselves and thinking they all this and all that, and they ain't even nothing. Jesus say, call no man good but the Father. So when we learn from Ruth and Naomi being on this little journey they on, when they be, wind up being in Boaz's field, that's a blessing. Now anytime you're somewhere where you don't know nobody, I'm gonna say it again, you a foreigner, you in a strange place. But did they, they did not let them, that did not, Ruth did not let that stop her. Ruth and Naomi. How many women are close like Ruth and Naomi? You don't see that nowadays. How many women can't stand each other? Mm, pretty much everybody look like. How many men can't stand each other? My point is, if we don't learn how to come together, instead of being so separated from each other, see, God never wanted us to have division, people. This is why I got a problem with, oh, you need to be a member at my church. That's my next video. This whole thing about you need to be on the roll call. If you ain't a member, you can't do this, you can't do that. Well, whenever did Jesus have a membership? He welcomed all sinners. All. Now we got so much religion, traditions, man-made mess, junk. BS is what it is. And we can't even get folks in the church because of tradition and religion. People that's doing the outreach ministry, keep doing what you're doing also. I love the ones who's reaching out on the outside. So many people think that ministry is just inside of the church. And it's past the church. God bless you and God keep you.